family. Well, the uh, soul food topic on tonight is, is the most high unjust? Okay. Sometimes um, we as the children of Israel, because of the curses of Deuteronomy that have fallen upon us, we come to a place where we feel there is no God, or if there is a God, that he's unjust because of all the things that befall us, because of all the persecution, the affliction, and the poverty, and all of that. We feel like there's no one watching out for us, okay? Feel like we're in total despair. But unbeknownst to those who accuse God of the things that happened to them, they realize not that it was your own actions that have led to the series of events that have caused your life to be what it is today. OK, we have to realize that the most high is not unjust when these things happen to us. It's not because the heavenly father hates us and he despises us, despises us. It's not that at all is but it's because he's having to punish us because of our iniquity. OK, because we would not acknowledge him because we have forsook him. All right. So we're going to go into the precepts and show you that the most high is not unjust when you go through these different things you have to come to a realization it's you it's not the most high god okay it's you you have gone on you have gone astray you have forsaken him and there are consequences to your actions and if you find yourself in the valley of despair it's because you have transgressed the law of the most high god okay so God, have you go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verses 29 through 32. Ezekiel, chapter 18, verses 29 through 32. Ezekiel 18, 29 through 32. Uh -huh. Yet saith the house of Israel, the way of Yahweh is not equal. Shalakia, so you see right here that the children of Israel collectively respond to the prophet Ezekiel and say the most high God's ways are unequal. He's unjust. He's not fair. His ways are not fair. This is what the children of Israel are saying to the prophet concerning the way in which the most high God conducts himself. Go on. Yet saith Oh, I'm sorry. Yet saith the house of Israel, the way of Yahweh is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? So the Most High God is responding to them. Okay, so you're saying that I'm unequal. You're saying that I'm not fair. My ways are not fair. Okay, let's analyze and see uh, if my ways are truly fair or not. Go on. Are not your ways unequal? Uh huh. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith ye King Yahweh. So, like you, so the Most High is saying, now you come, you coming at me, and you're confronting me and accusing me of being unrighteous, being unjust, and being unfair. No, it's you that's unfair. It's you whose ways are unjust. Okay, and now I'm having to judge you because of that. So you're only looking at the punishment end of my action. You're not seeing the cause. And it is your transgression that has caused me, that has compelled me, moved me to punish you. And now you want to cry out and say, you are unfair, God. You're unfair because I'm going through all this. If God truly loved me, then I wouldn't be going through this. You curse me at your mouth because of your own deeds that you've transgressed against me. Against me. I made a covenant. And I've designed for you to keep it. That in, if you keep it, I will bless you. These were the conditions that I laid out before Moses and your great ancestors. But you, and you agreed to it now. You agreed to the covenant. But now that I'm having to go along with the terms and conditions of this contract, now you're saying I'm unfair. You said now you're saying that I'm unfairly penalizing you. No, you're unjust. Your ways are unequal. Read. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. So the Most High God has made a way of escape. He's saying, yeah, you have fallen upon ruin. Yeah, your life ain't looking good right now because you've sinned. And now I'm responsible for your demise. But look, repent 
and I'll make it right. Turn from your iniquity and I'll make things right in your life. But you say I'm unfair though. I lay before you blessings and cursings. If you keep my commandments and walk upright, I will bless you and set you above all nations of the earth. But if you go aside and break this covenant agreement, mm -hmm. then I'm going to have to curse you. Mm -hmm. And you agreed to the contract. Mm -hmm. When Moses sprinkled the blood and the people said, amen, they agreed to the contract. Not only them that stand there, but with their seed after them. But now you come to this place where you're lawless, you're unrighteous, unholy, wicked, rebellious. And I've turned my face against you and I've caused the evils of the curse to plague you. Now you coming at me talking about you not fair. Your ways ain't just. Nah, you need to examine yourself. You need to look at your own self and say, why have these things come upon me? But the merciful father is saying, look, all you got to do is repent and I'll make it right. All you got to do is repent. Read. Verse 31. Cast away from you all your transgressions. Cast away all of your transgressions. What is the transgressions? When you sin against the law of God. That's what your transgression is. That's what your iniquity is. Okay? It's not uh, some, you know, frivolous laws of the street or whatever other policy or beliefs or convictions man may have. I'm not talking about that. I don't hold that in high regard. I have a set of laws, statutes and commandments that I gave to you and to your forefathers. And when you break those, you commit transgression. Turn from your transgression and keep my laws. Read. Cast away you from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Look, we you agree to the contract. And the consequence of the contract is, if you go off and you repent not, then the scripture says that these, these curses and plagues will follow you until thou be destroyed. Until thou be destroyed. So I'm imploring you. The Most High God is imploring his people. Look, my hands are tied. You agreed to the contract. If you repent and act right, look, I can stop it all right now. But if you continue on, then you're going to see the grave. And there's nothing I can do to stop it. Because you agreed to it. Read. For I have no pleasure... In death of him that dieth. I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Meaning he don't want to see his people die. He don't want to see his people perish. Because his, his design, his purpose was to see us be glorified and magnified. To live out all the blessings that were listed in the law for us to possess. He don't want to see us perish in our iniquity. Read. Read. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Okay. All right. From there, we're going to go to the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verses 2 through 4. The book of Numbers, chapter 14, verses 2 through 4. So the Most High God is telling his people, look, you agree to the covenant, man. Keep the commandments and live. You don't, you're going to die. Plain and simple. Don't come at me talking about I'm unfair. You the one that's not fair. Because I held up my end of the bargain. You have it. But you coming at me saying I'm wrong. You saying I'm unjust. Okay? There's too many of our people today who believe that way. They speak boastful things against the Most High God. They want to curse his name. They want to slander his name. They want to... Uh, mar his reputation when you don't even know the Most High God. Okay? The scriptures let us know plainly, they that keep my commandments are they that know me, who do the will of my Father in heaven. Okay? So if you're not keeping his commandments, you don't know him. And if you don't know him, you cannot righteously say that he's unjust or unfair. Mm -hmm. You don't know the character or the mind of God.
because you don't keep his commandments. You walk in your own transgressions. Go ahead and read. Numbers 14, 2 through 4. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would Yahweh that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would Yahweh we had died in this wilderness? And whereby hath Yahweh brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? Mm. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. So our great ancestors in the wilderness, you they came to a place where they murmured against the Most High God and they murmured against the leadership of Moses and said, look, we had some great stuff when we were in mm. Egypt, but now we out here in the desert, we out here in the wilderness, you got the hot sun, you got the arid, you know, temperature. You know what I'm saying? You got these serpents and scorpions and all that. You know what I'm saying? We don't got the grass and we don't have, you know, uh, all the the beautiful, lush greenery of Egypt. We don't have that anymore. We out here in the desert and we hungry and we thirsty. And we grow tired of this place. We want to go back to Egypt. What did it say here in verse three? I think it is. Now, verse two, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt or would God we had died in this wilderness? So they're trying to say the most high God is unjust. It's like, wait a second. So God did all these wonderful plagues and brought us out of Egypt just to die in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. It'd be better if we just died in Egypt. OK. This is the 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 clay saying unto the potter, what makest thou? Your plan don't make sense. I feel like we should be doing this. I feel like we should be doing that. Okay? The Most High already declared to his people what his plan was. He said that I am to, I'm going to cause you to go into the land of your fathers and possess that land and drive out the nations that occupy this land today. Mm -hmm. It is a promised land, the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. He, through his servant Moses, already made it abundantly clear what his plan was. So the people were fully informed of what the mind of God was to lead them out of captivity, to journey through the wilderness and to enter into the land and and remove the inhabitants thereof so that they might possess the land in safety. They already knew that. They already knew that. But because they lusted and they wanted to go back into Egypt, you got to remember some of them left their homes, okay? They left their friends, they left their job, they left their car, you know what I'm saying? They left a lot of property and assets in the land of Egypt. They had real estate. In Egypt. Okay. Some of them Israelites had the bag in Egypt. Okay. Some of them had a lot of things going for themselves. So when Moses came to them and said, look, the heavenly father is going to save us about Egypt. That's why, you know, it says in scripture that. Um, their response was, you know, they didn't relieve Moses because of the cruel bondage. And although our people were afflicted with hard bondage. Some of them, obviously, because if you're trying to go back into a into a house of bondage, it must have been some 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 things good in order for you to want to go back into the place of slavery. So some of those Israelites obviously had some good things going for themselves because it's not just here in numbers. It's 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 a number of different times where a multitude of Israelites say, yo, man, we need to go back. This was a reoccurring theme. This wasn't just one time. The children of Israel murmured, let us make ourselves, make ourselves captains and go back. I, I wonder if we can go back and, you know, we can still go and serve the, the, the uh, serve Pharaoh in Egypt. I wonder if I could go get my old job back. 
I wonder if I can go, you know, redeem that land that I bought in Goshen. They were still lusting. They didn't want to leave. So when Moses came to them and said, look, the most high God wants to, you know, save you up out of this land. I don't know about that, bro. I got these payments. You know, I got these car payments. I got this mortgage. I'm trying to pay, bro. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to get my business going. My wife trying to go back to college. I got these things going on, Moses. I'm really not trying. And that's our mentality today. We have all these aspirations here in the land of captivity, here in Babylon. And the Most High is trying to bring about deliverance to his people, but they got their minds set on worldly things. Thou savest not the things of God, thou savest the things of men. Okay? And so we had that mindset. But when the Most High judges us because of our actions, then we want to count him unjust, count him unfair. Was that all? Okay. Uh, let's go to Psalms chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Psalms chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. You know, a lot of our brothers and sisters, you know, in these last days have, are cleaving to these false doctrines, cleaving to, you know, Egyptology and Pan-Africanism and you know, different uh, hotep teachings or whatever, okay? All of these different false doctrines and religions our people are cleaving to because they refuse to want to keep the commandments of God, okay? Because these other religions, these other belief systems, you can kind of customize them, okay? You could do whatever you want. And because you dictate whether you know whether you want to do this or do that this religion this belief these con set of convictions you know is you know it's suitable for you mm -hmm. but when you come to serve the most high god you don't come doing it your way mm -hmm. let me grab a precept real quick before you get into psalms let's go to hebrews Let me see your phone real quick. Let me see if I can find this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, and it reads, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. All right. So when you keep these other religions, you can do whatever you want. OK. If you want to do this or do that, you live by the seat of your, your own pants. You, you know, you live by your own convictions, your own beliefs. No one can judge you. No one can tell you wrong. You are your own God, essentially. But when you come to serve the most high God, you got to set that aside. Mm -hmm. All right. Verse six, it reads, but without faith, meaning faith in him, it is impossible to please him. So you can't please him being faithless for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that of, of them that diligently seek him. So if any man going to come to God and look to serve him, he must, the word says he must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of they that diligently seek him diligently. OK, diligently, when you do something diligently, you do it meticulously. You do it with a lot of attention to detail. OK, when you do something diligently, you typically don't do it quick, but you take your time. OK. Yeah, I was definitely a detail oriented game. So when you come to serve the most high God, you got to put aside your own thought processes and your own ways, but you got to do it his way. Yeah. All right. You can go on. You get killed. Put your finger up. Go and read. Uh, Psalms 14, one through three. 
Um, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Salakia. So this is what the fool says in his heart. There is no God. There is no God. He's a fool. Okay. Whether it be, you know, brother polite or whoever it is. They can wax poetically about this or that. You know, expound on the teachings of science. So like, try to orate. But if this man comes out of his mouth, or this woman for that matter, come out of their mouth and say there is no God, they are a fool. That's what the writer is saying. They are a fool. Read. They are corrupt. They are corrupt. So not only are they foolish, not only are they stupid, they are corrupt. Their ways are not pure. Their intentions are not holy. They are corrupt through and through. They renounce their creator. They are corrupt. Read. They have done abominable works. Mm -hmm. There is none that doeth good. Any man that says there is no God is a fool. He's corrupt and there's no good in him. Read. The, um, Yahweh looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if they were, there were that if Yahweh looked down from heaven upon the children of man men to see if there were any that did understand and seek Yahweh. Uh -huh. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. So like, hold it right there. So we read in Ezekiel 18 how the children of Israel were responding to the prophet Ezekiel saying the most high God, he unfair, he unjust. His ways are unequal. And the most high God is having to respond and say, what? You trying to say I'm unequal? I laid out what I wanted you to do. You agreed to it. And now you're not holding up your end of the bargain. You're unjust. Your ways are unequal. And now the most high God has reiterated the same thing here in Psalms. He read and say, they are all gone aside. They are all altogether become filthy. So you cannot come out your mouth and say that I'm unjust when everybody all of y'all have gone aside. None of you do with good. Your works are abominable, the scripture says. Mm -hmm. Your works are abominable. But you want to call me unjust. You want to say my ways are unequal. Read. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. No, not one. Staying in the book of Psalms, going to go to chapter 73, verse 11. Psalms chapter 73, verse 11. And they say, how does Yahweh know? And is there knowledge in the most high? So our people, you know, um, they say there is no God. They either dismiss him altogether or they diminish his power, his might, and his ability to see and understand. And they only do that to their own detriment. They do that to their own destruction. But they also do it in order to comfort themselves to continue to sin and have the liberty to sin. Okay? So that this verse is fulfilled in their heart. And they say, how doth God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? I do whatever, whatever I want to do. Can't nobody tell me nothing. It ain't no God. He ain't going to do nothing. But in your heart of hearts, you know there's a God. And you know that the things that you're going through seem to be, how would you say, like it's a, a purpose. All these different things that, that, that trouble you, they're purposed in your life. You know it is. These things aren't just random. But because you've cast God out of your mind, out of your heart, believe that he's not there. You do whatever you want to do. He's in none of your thoughts. Okay. This is what our people, this is what our people do. They do not keep the commandments of the most high God. They transgress day after day. They offend him. 
in word. They offend him in thought. They offend him in deed. Every single day. They transgress his laws. And they walk after their own imagination all the day long. The thoughts of their heart are only evil continually. But when the rains pour, and when I say rains on a spiritual level, meaning that plagues and curses and misfortune befall our people, then we want to lift our hands and cry out, cry for help, right? And we're looking for a speedy answer to our calamity. But the Most High God said, I will laugh at your calamity. Mm -hmm. I laid out what I wanted you to do. You thought I was a game. You did whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I poured these plagues out. Now you want to come and get down on your knees and cry out. Now you want to keep about 40% of the commandments thinking that that's going to, you know, uh, entreat the Most High God to change your, your misfortunes. He said he's going to laugh at you. Your ways are not sincere. Your ways are not sincere. Some people literally think that, that you don't have to keep the commandments if you just um, like uh, just keep some of the commandments or one of the commandments for a period of time that that will garner a blessing from God for him to answer your prayer. People think that. People really sincerely think that. The Most High God is not responding to you. So if you're a thief, you're a liar. Some people think if I just stop lying for a little bit, stop stealing for a little bit, that the Most High God is going to hear my prayer and answer me. The scriptures let us know if you transgress in one part, you transgress the entire law. So you say on one end, I'm not doing this, but you still transgress in the rest of his law. The Most High God is not pleased in you. Because you're not trying to put away your transgressions. Mm -hmm. Just a transgression. He's going to laugh at you. He's not going to hear your prayer. Your, your prayer becomes an abomination to him. Okay. From there, we're going to go to the wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 13, verse 1. I'm going to read that. 13? Yeah, 13 and 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 1. Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of God and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is. Neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the workmaster. So Solomon is saying men is stupid. They stupid from the womb. Because if any man want to come out their mouth and say God is not real, he don't, he don't exist. But then behold all of his workmanship He's a fool. He is a fool. Okay? From there, I'll have you go to Romans chapter 9, verse 14. Because Apostle Paul is going to touch on that topic too. I believe that's what it was. Romans 9 and 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with Yahweh? So, like you, so the topic is, is the most high unjust? Apostle Paul is making it clear. He's asking the question, is there unrighteousness with God? When he does things that we can't quite understand, does that make him unjust? Is the, does that make him unrighteous? Read. Yah forbid. Meaning absolutely not. He is not unjust. He is not unrighteous. Read. That is uh, 14. Okay. I thought I was going to touch on something else. Okay, from there. You just stay in Romans because I'm going to have you read another passage in there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to is, uh, Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 through 7. Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 through 7. So Paul makes it clear. Absolutely not. There is not unrighteousness with God. None. None whatsoever. If there's any unrighteousness, it's with us. Mm -hmm. If things appear to be unfair, it's because we have been unfair. We have been unequal. 
He is a just judge. Inequitable. But we are not. Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 through 7. And Yahweh passed by before him and proclaimed, Yahweh, Yahweh God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Okay? So it's not the Most High God because his character is long-suffering with abundance of goodness and truth. He doesn't punish us immediately. He's long-suffering with us. It's only till the Most High God feel he has no other choice than, than to bring the hammer down on us because we just won't listen. We won't hearken unto him. The Most High God was provoked unto anger many a time in the wilderness because our forefathers just would not listen. They would act right for a little bit. They would give their sacrifices and the women would sing songs and, you know, do all that and then turn around and murmur and complain. Murmur because they ain't because you know they didn't get no 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 flesh to eat. Murmur and complain because it's too hot in the wilderness. Murmur and complain because they was missing Egypt. Murmur and complain because they wanted to be the leaders. They murmured and complained about everything. Okay. Verse 7. Keeping mercy for thousands. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin that will by no means clear the guilty. Uh, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. So as we read in Ezekiel, was that 18? Yeah, 18 he said, repent. All you got to do is repent. Because it says here in verse 7, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. So if you repent, I will forgive you. I will wipe it out. I will exonerate you from all of the, the strikes against your name. I will blot them out. I'm prepared to do it. I got a big spiritual eraser where I'm prepared to erase it out, blot it out. But if not, and you will not hearken unto my word, then I will visit, I will visit the iniquity of your fathers upon you unto the third and to the fourth generation. You're going to have to pay for your iniquity. You're not going to get off scot-free. But when our people expect to get off scot-free and do whatever they want, then they believe that God is unjust. Mm -hmm. He's unfair. They have no knowledge of who God is. Their ways are corrupt. Their ways are abominable. They say, God don't see us. What, what is he going to do? Mm -hmm. But then when he bring the hammer down on your behind, then you, God, please, why you do that to me? I mean, you didn't obey me. What you, what you thought I was going to do? Just let it slide? Yes. On the IUIC video, Nathaniel talking to the man in Liberia. Is that Yeah, the I think he was asking Nathaniel, who explained it very, very well. That man, something wrong with him. It's like Bishop Nathaniel can go in and break down everything he's saying. It's the, well, Bishop, you're saying the people can. It's like, it's something wrong with him. But go yeah, on. Bishop Nathaniel explained to him about us keeping the laws and the, it basically the, um, the, what it, what the, contract entails and we agree to it the punishment for not the blessings for um keeping the laws or the curses for he asked bishop nathaniel well why didn't god just um do something different so that we wouldn't sin and, and that right there that attitude is the attitude you can finish in a moment, but no, that can. that's the attitude that our people have mm -hmm. and that get them into trouble. It, it, don't, it don't matter what you think. You agreed mm -hmm. to this covenant. Mm -hmm. And so when they talk like that, it's because in their heart, they believe the most high is unjust. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't he just do this? Mm -hmm. Why couldn't he just do that? Why couldn't he just leave us in Egypt? Would the most high have us to die in Egypt or to die in this wilderness? 
without C Uh in Romans 9 and 14. Is there unrighteousness with God? Absolutely not. God forbid. So that's the mind of the our ignorant people. They feel like, you know, God shouldn't have did this. He, you know, he could have did it this way. Mm -hmm. He made a covenant with our ancestors and they agreed to it. You agreed to it. Mm -hmm. And with understanding of the terms of the contract, you under, we understood it. And it was signed in blood. But we want to count the Most High God to be unequal in his ways. All right, from there, uh, Romans chapter 1, verses 20 through 22 and 28. Romans chapter 1, verses 20 through 22 and 28. Okay. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, mm -hmm. even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Salakia. <laughs> that's now that's the a scripture I wanted to allude to because Solomon was saying the same thing in Wisdom of Solomon 13 and 1. Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of God and could not out of the good things that are seen. That's the same thing Paul is saying. How are you trying to say that the most high God don't exist or he's unjust or whatever? Don't you see his glory? Don't you see his splendor, his wonderful workmanship all around you? And you, you're willingly ignorant of these things? Okay. Could not out of the good things which are seen know him that is. So if you fail to acknowledge that God created this, then there's no way you can you can get to know him because you reject him and you reject the things that he has created. Hold on. Neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the workmaster. So you can look at the beautiful mountain. You can see the skylines and not skyline. But you can see the uh, sunset and all the wonders of God and, and, and marvel and say that they're beautiful, but then reject the creator. Yeah, that's just like with the children of Israel, even before he brought them out of Egypt, the signs and the wonders that he did in Egypt to the Egyptians, they witnessed that firsthand. Then he brought them out in divided the Red Sea so that they can walk over it on dry land. All of that that they seen, all the wonders that he did, they didn't have enough trust and faith in him and fear also to just obey what he's saying, giving them to do. I'll bless you. I'll give you this land here that these wicked people that's in it, I'll drive them all out, all of them, and give it to you, and it'll you'll be so blessed. But we, after seeing all the wonders that he did, we didn't even believe enough seeing it, just like what these scriptures are telling us, seeing this, like you said, the sunset seeing the beautiful colors of the flowers and the plants and food growing from the ground, from dirt, all of this stuff that we see with our own eyes, you know, the days going day after day after day going by. This is not man doing this. This has got to be the great creator, almighty Yahweh, that's causing this. Why are we so lackadaisical, lackadaisical with, in our minds that we can't be steady in our faith and in our trust in him? Well, our minds are fleeting. And a lot of times it comes from, for our people who reject the most high God or, or count him as unjust, comes from pain, it comes from trauma, comes from things that have hurt us in our past, okay? And we have no understanding of why those things transpired. And because we do not have an understanding, we curse God. We count him unjust. We count his ways unequal. We work hard to try to achieve the things we want for ourselves in life. And when they don't come to pass, then again, we curse God. 
Never looking at ourselves. Never looking at ourselves and realizing that we have transgressed his laws. Mm -hmm. We never do that. We never examine ourselves. We never amend our ways. Mm -hmm. We point the blame at others. And we lift and wag our fists at the most high God. Mm -hmm. It's like, look, all you got to do is repent. I'm prepared to bless you, but you got to repent. We don't want to do that, though. Because, unfortunately, we rather stay in that pit where we are than to come out of it. Because to come out of that pit, you'd have to take on a responsibility to obey his commandments. Mm -hmm. It really comes down to that. You will have to convict, oh, obey his commandments. Read. Verse 21. Because when that they knew, because that when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Yahweh, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So, Apostle Paul is showing you how an individual comes to a place where they disregard the Most High God. They became ungrateful, unthankful, and their foolish heart was darkened. They weren't able to see clearly. They don't acknowledge the most high God. They can count him unjust. They can count him unfair and unequal because they were ungrateful. Mm -hmm. They want to take, 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 but are never giving to the most high God. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the most high will be like, I'm not giving you nothing. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I will give you some. I'll give you these curses. I'm going to give you these plagues. See how you like that. Try this on for size. Their foolish heart was dark, darkened. Read. Mm -hmm. Verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became foolish. Professing themselves to be wise. They cast off the knowledge of God to seek after this esoteric knowledge. Believing that, you know, in this book or in that book or listening to this person. Following after this God. I've got knowledge now. I got understanding now. But you still are plagued with the curses that the Most High placed on you. And you and your knowledge can't get you out of that. Right? Your knowledge can't get you out of that. Professing yourself to be wise, you a fool, man. You a fool. You still reject God. You still reject his law. While the plagues are whooping you upside your head, you curse him to, to his face. You are a fool and you shall be destroyed. Read. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain Yahweh in their knowledge, Yahweh gave them over to a reprobate mind. Says it right there. They did not like to retain Yahweh in their knowledge, not just the knowledge of who he is, but his law. Mm -hmm. They did not like to retain it. Keep the commandments. Keep the Sabbath day. Wear your fringes. Love thy neighbor as thyself, meaning the children of Israel. Put no other God before me. Honor thy mother and father. Kill not, lie not, do no, don't do these things. Put away these unclean foods. Worship me. Nah. Nah, I don't want to do that. Keep the Sabbath day. Man, it was this coming every week. I don't know about that, dog. I'm trying to go have fun. Fringes, I don't really look cool. I don't look stylish. I don't, I don't know about that. Put away the bacon? Bro, how am I supposed to eat, eat a cheeseburger without bacon? They did not like to retain Yahweh in their heart. So he gave them over to what? A reprobate mind. A reprobate mind, meaning they can't overcome. They'll never believe. Now they're at a place where they're only appointed for destruction. They're reprobate in their thinking. You can go and try to teach them and preach to them all day long. They're not going to receive it because their minds are reprobate. Because they do not want to retain him in their knowledge. They will retain filth but when it comes to the holy things of God. They don't want to retain that. I don't want to have nothing to do with that. Leave me alone. Here comes this Israelite again. I don't, but you leave me alone. That is our mindset. And so he has given us over to a reprobate mind. Was that all? No. 
to do those things which are not convenient. Okay. All right, last scripture. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verses 13 through 15. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verses 13 through 15. For neither is there any God but thou that careth for all, to whom thou mightest show that thy judgment is not unright. So you're merciful. The Most High God is merciful to his people. Merciful even to the heathen without. If you really want to look at it that way, because he could destroy all those upon the face of the earth if he really wanted to. Said none doeth good. No, not one. You're really not. I mean, even Israel, we're not really worthy either. Mm -hmm. So you want to call the most high God unjust. You ain't worthy. Don't you know you could easily be destroyed? You're worthy of death. 13 again, for neither is there any God but thou that care for all to whom thou mightest show that thy judgment is not unright. So when you afflict, when you persecute, when you judge accordingly, your judgment is righteous judgment. It's not unright. Okay, when you, when you decide to afflict a man because that man was deserving of affliction. Okay, verse 14. Neither shall king or tyrant be able to set his face against thee for any whom thou hast punished. So when a man is going through, can't no king go and beseech the most high God and make and make it stop. The only way that the curses and punishment can cease from a man's life is if he repent. But our people don't want to do that. They have not retained God in their knowledge. So he gave him over, over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Because they don't want to keep the commandments, he's going to put a spirit on them for, to them for, let me say that again. Because they do not want to keep the commandments, the Most High God will put a spirit on them for, they, for them to not keep the commandments. Reprobate thinking. And can't no king, tyrant, can't no special you know author or person that you esteem or celebrity no one can bail you out it's your punishment and your punishment alone because of your iniquity they can't save you out of that so you can cleave to their smooth words all you want to and think that their words you know you know give you peace but it becomes a vexation of spirit when you realize that their words profit nothing you're still being afflicted. You still feel the pain and trauma and depression and sorrow that comes with so like, comes with disobeying the Most High God's word. Verse 15. For so much then as thou art righteous thyself, thou orderest all things righteously, meaning his judgment. When he does stuff, he do it righteous because he's righteous. Mm -hmm. Thinking it not agreeable with thy power to condemn him that hath not deserved to be punished. So the writer is saying, when the Most High God decides to punish someone, it's because they were deserving of it. He doesn't punish someone who was not deserving of it. But according to Psalms, all men technically are deserving of it. You have all fallen. So you really can get this punishment if you want it. But I show long suffering and mercy. So we really need to examine ourselves. Stop cursing the Most High God and repent. That's all you got to do. For the children of Israel, all you have to do is repent and keep his commandments. You can see your life turn around. You can see things improve in your life. Your finances. Because that's usually the biggest thing. We're in the land of our captivity. It was not designed for us to prosper here. If a brother or sister is able to make a couple million because they have a skill or, you know, a product or something they could sell and make some money. OK, that's fine. But it was never destined for us to prevail in this land. But the lust of your eye, lust of your flesh has caused you to reject and not retain the knowledge of God. And so he's given you over to reprobate thinking, just like our, our forefathers. Like, that's why I'm saying they had to be doing well for themselves in Egypt, some of them. 
had some real estate, you know, owned a couple homes, had their own servants, had a lot of, had a lot of livestock in Goshen, in Egypt. And so when deliverance came, it's like, nah, I'm not really trying to do that. And when they came to a place of deliverance in the wilderness, they it repented them that they even came out of Egypt. They wanted to go back. Mm -hmm. They did not retain God in their knowledge. So they were given unto a reprobate mind, and many of them perished right there in the wilderness mm -hmm. because they did not believe. Mm -hmm. They counted the most high God as unjust. Mm -hmm. Okay? We... These curses, I, I remember doing a lesson a while, a while back. Let these curses have their perfect work. These curses served a purpose to get us to repent and acknowledge our transgression. But unfortunately, because we're so wicked in our heart and in our mind, we don't turn back to God, but we just distance ourselves further from him. He sent his servants the prophet time and time again to try to get us on the right path. But then he said, you know what? Now I'm going to have to just pour out all the curses. I just try to sprinkle some curses to get you to do right. You didn't. Now I just got to drown you. You know, at first I'll just wet you. Just wet you. With the curses. Now I have to drown you in the curses. And let you just get soaking wet. OK, so the most high God is not is the most high God is not unjust. It is us who's unjust. Mm -hmm. We must repent and keep his commandments lest we perish.